What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can overlay some destruction onto a live action shot, utilizing some fairly simple compositing techniques inside of Blender. I'll be going through the 3D tracking process, setting up a basic 3D environment, adding some various alpha planes with some grunge and fire and destruction, and then finally separating these elements into different view layers and compositing them together all inside of Blender. Before we get started, in case you missed it, we are having a 40% off sale on all of our Blender Market products, including City Builder 3D, Chaos, Spiderfy, and all of our add-on value packs as well. So if you're interested, just use the discount code JULY40 for 40% off at Blender Market Checkout. Anyways guys, let's get started. Before we get started in Blender, I recommend you have a few different elements to start this tutorial. I've exported a few different elements with alphas from Photoshop. As you can see here, I've just put them all in one folder. I just have, as you can see here, a uh, shattered glass element that we'll be using with an alpha channel where you see the white here. And then I have some damaged asphalt as well where the white is an alpha channel. And then I have a tire marks element as well with an alpha channel where the white would be here. Here. We also have a fire stock footage element as well with an alpha channel for its background, but you can use any element of your choice. The main thing that you need for your elements is to have an alpha channel as their background. So I'll go ahead and just show you how I would do this in Photoshop before we get started inside of Blender. I'll go ahead and find one of our uh, JPEG files here. I'll just choose this shattered glass image from textures.com and uh, I'll just go ahead and open this with Photoshop and uh, you can use GIMP or uh, you know any different uh, photo editing software of your choice as long as it allows you to save it as a PNG with an alpha channel and uh, this is our shattered glass element that we'll be using and uh, I'll just use our magic wand tool and I'll select the concrete portion of the image here then I'll go to our layers tab I'll go ahead and duplicate this and click OK I'll delete our background locked layer and now we just have a copy and now I'll go ahead and just press delete and now as you can see here our ground is gone and if we deselect everything we just have some two-dimensional glass pieces on top of an alpha channel and now if we just go to file and save as we can save it to our computer here and I'll go ahead and save it under Photoshop files and we'll call it glass with alpha channel and we'll change the format to a PNG and PNG will render out that alpha channel effectively. And uh, then I'll just click on save, choose your file size, I'll choose smallest file size. And now we should have this file saved as a PNG with an alpha channel and we can import this into our scene and play around with it, overlaying it on top of our 3D scene in Blender. So you can do this technique with a variety of different grunge layers. I just wanted to show you guys how I did it for this shot, but uh, you'll need a few of those grunge elements or you can download some online with alpha channels already attached. But uh, anyways guys, here we are inside of Blender let's get started first I'll go ahead and just delete everything in our scene here and I'm going to go ahead and switch to our cycles rendering engine so go to our render properties tab here and switch to cycles and the first thing we're going to do is motion track our shot so I'll go ahead and click on the plus tab here and we'll go to uh, VFX and motion tracking and then we're going to click on open and find our uh, video file so I've just saved it under cop scene footage and we'll just choose our footage here you can choose an image sequence as well however I've never had any problems with using mp4 files so I'm going to go ahead and use this I'll go ahead and click on open and this is our clip here one thing I want to do is I want to click on set scene frames here so that our timeline in blender is automatically set up to include all of the frames in our footage and then I'll also click on prefetch so that blender loads in all of the frames from this video footage into our scene so that we can play it back more effectively all right so now that we've uploaded our footage into blender let's go ahead and track it so I've done a little more in-depth tutorial on 3d camera tracking I'll put a link to that in the description if you you want to learn a little bit more about it but for this specific tutorial we're just going to use the detect features option here so first I'll just uh, choose the blurry footage option so we have a little bit bigger pattern and search size then I'll just go to the beginning of our shot here and I'll click on detect features and as you can see here blender is going to choose a variety of points for us and if you don't have any points showing up here you can increase the threshold for blender to select these uh, different features but this is looking pretty good so I'll just go ahead and click on uh, track markers forward and blender is going to go through our scene as you can see and track all of these points and uh, now I'll go ahead and click on detect features again but this time at the end of our timeline so I'll click on it here and then I'll click on track backwards here at the bottom and blender is going to track these points backwards and uh, then I'm going to go to the middle of our timeline say frame uh, 200 since our end frame is at 355 maybe something like 160 I'll click on detect features again and then I'll track these tracking marks forward and then and I'll track them backwards as well. 
And if we scroll through our timeline, you can see that we have a few different tracking markers that are not doing their job, like these two markers on the cop here. So the first thing I'm going to do to kind of clean up our tracking markers is just uh, kind of scroll through our scene by eye here and just remove any tracking markers that are slipping off of our uh, shot. So these two markers on our cop here definitely need to be deleted. So I'll just select them and delete them. And you can also look at the graph here at the bottom of our window here. And as you can see here, we have a uh, tracking marker that's going way off of the rest of them. So that's a good indicator that something is going wrong here. So uh, I'll go ahead and select this tracking marker by just clicking on our graph data. And if I uh, scroll over this point here, we should be able to find this point. Here it is on the bottom left here. As you can see, if we scroll over it, the marker is jumping quite a bit. So we can go ahead and select that and delete it as well. And uh, now we have a uh, pretty nice looking uh, graph here. There's a little uh, jumpy one here, as you can see. Let's see if we can find this one. It's just right in the middle of our shot here and it's uh, not doing its job. It's kind of tracking our shadow of the police officer. So I'll go ahead and press X and delete that one. And uh, you know, just go by eye. Any markers that you see that are not on the right spot just go ahead and delete them and now that we've gone through our timeline by eye we're going to go ahead and go to the solve panel here and choose a few settings to solve our camera we're going to check the check boxes for refining the focal length the optical center and the radial distortion of the camera now I'm just going to click on solve camera motion and we'll see what blender gives us as our solve error for the camera all right so as you can see here we have a solve error of 6.62 pixels which is uh, not terrible but definitely not usable for this shot so we want to try to get this a bit lower so what we can do to uh, clean up our track a bit is we can use our uh, clean up tab here so I'll go ahead and click on clean tracks and then a little window should pop up here and we'll just increase this reprojection error to select only the points above uh, this projection error so let's say uh, we want to select all the points with a projection error of say 6.7 or more so I'll go ahead and leave it like this it's going to automatically select those points for us and we'll just go ahead and press X and delete those points and uh, now we'll just select all of our points in our scene again and click on solve camera motion again and now as you can see we have a solve error of 2.22 pixels which is much better than six um, but I'm going to try to refine it a bit more um, another thing you can do here is uh, add some tracking points manually so that you have some kind of reference for the geometry in your scene so maybe I want to add a point here on the snow for example I'll uh, go to the beginning of our shot kind of zoom into our snow here and I'll press uh, command left click and I'll select that point of our snow here and then I'll just kind of you know track forward and uh, you know see if that snow gives us a little bit of a nice reference there and it actually does give us a nice reference however after a certain point it starts getting covered by the cop car so what we can do is we can select it here and then we can clear the track path of this marker after this point in our timeline so I'll go ahead and click on that and now as you can see if I go past it the uh, tracking marker just stops tracking after that point so a lot of different little tricks here but that'll give us a nice reference for our ground plane maybe we want to add one more tracking marker on our uh, road here I'll choose another piece of snow go to the beginning of our timeline click on control left click and then I'll track through this one as well as you can see we're also losing this point at a certain point in our clip near the end so I'll just select that clip and then I'll clear the track data beyond this point and that should give us a pretty nice reference I'll go ahead and select all of our tracking points again and I do want to clean our tracks once more so I'll go ahead and click on clean tracks again and we'll start uh, increasing our reprojection error here we'll try to delete all the points that are an error of 2.8 or above maybe Maybe we'll choose something like 3.6 or above. I think this should be about right. We delete all these points in the trees here. So I'll go ahead and select these points, press X, delete those, reselect everything, and click on solve camera motion again. And now as you can see here, we have a solve error of 1.1 pixels, which is a pretty solid track. If you want to try to get it below one pixel, you can. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to go with this for now. So now what we want to do is we want to add this tracking data to our camera and set up a nice basic 3D world. So I'll go to our 3D viewport here. I'll press shift A. We'll add a uh, camera to our scene and uh, it'll just come to the center of our scene here. And that's just so we can add our tracking data to this camera. What we want to do, we'll scroll down here to our scene setup tab here and we'll go ahead and click on set as background. And now as you can see here, if we go to the viewpoint of the camera, you can see that our footage is now the background of this camera, which is going to be helpful when uh, 
uh, adding our elements. And then we'll go to the orientation tab here and uh, we'll choose a point for the origin of our scene. So I think maybe this point uh, right in the center of our scene should be pretty good, right where this actor is getting put into the car here. I'll select that point and then click on set origin. And now as you can see here in our uh, 3D world, we have this point as the point of 0, 0, 0 in our scene. And you can use a lot of these different orientation tools here. I tend to use mostly just set origin and floor. So we'll go ahead and set a floor for the scene as well. I'll select three different points along our road here. So I'll select this one here, select this one over here, and then I will select this little piece of snow here. And then I'll click on set floor. And uh, now Blender kind of knows the general layout and orientation of our 3D camera in our world. And finally, after we've done this, we'll go ahead and click on set up tracking scene. And now Blender is going to add some uh, basic geometry and uh, compositing nodes for us to use later in our scene. All right, so now that we've tracked our camera, let's go back to layout tab here and adjust a few things. When we clicked on the setup tracking scene, Blender automatically created a foreground and a background for us. And in the foreground are the elements that are going to be rendered normally, and the background is just our ground plane shadow catcher. For this specific tutorial, however, we're not going to use a shadow catcher, so I'll just uh, go ahead and delete it here. And uh, we can still keep this ground plane just so uh, we have a reference of our ground. And we also want to go to our secondary view layer here, our background view layer. And we actually just want to delete this view layer for now. And uh, now we just have one view layer. We'll start adding more later in this tutorial, but uh, this should be a good starting point. I'm also going to select our light here and just delete this from our scene. And I'll move our camera to our main scene collection. All right, so if you scroll through the timeline, you'll notice that our camera is tracked and moving in the same way that our live action camera was moving for our video file. And what we're going to do now is kind of recreate the geometry of our live action shot inside of the computer so that we can composite different elements a little bit more effectively. So one thing we can enable to help us do this is uh, the motion tracking data for this camera. So I'll go up here to this little drop down menu and enable motion tracking data. And now as you can see here, we have all of our different tracking points inside of our 3D world so that we can use this to recreate the geometry of our scene. And the nice thing about adding a floor to our scene is that our ground plane here is automatically the same orientation and uh, kind of rotation as our road. So we can use this as a really nice reference for placing our grunge and other different layers on top of our live action shot. One thing we don't need, however, is this cube here. So I'll go ahead and select it and delete it. And I'm going to open up a side window here. And on this side window, we'll go to view and viewpoint camera and now we can kind of work in the 3d world in this side while seeing our camera view in this side of our 3d window all right so the first thing i'm going to do is just select both our camera and our background plane here and just scale them up a little bit and i just want to give a little more space here for our scene something like this and now what i want to do is i just want to position our ground plane here so that it pretty much is the geometry of our road so it's already in the right orientation generally however what we want to do is just make it a little bit skinnier so it's just where our road would be here so i'll just go ahead and press s and then y and we'll scale it down on the y axis and then we should be able to just kind of move it over on the y-axis as well until it's where our road would be and this is just a nice reference to add the rest of our elements on top of it all right so now that we've created our road geometry the next thing we're going to do before adding any of our grunge elements is actually recreate the car geometry in our scene so that we can use the car geometry to mask out our road elements a little bit more effectively so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to append a very basic low poly 3d model of a car so I'll go ahead and just go to file and append I've just saved a file here with a CG car in it and I'll just choose all of our objects for the car itself and then I'll click on append and now as you can see here a car is uh, entering our scene and I'll just kind of drag it off to the side here for now and I want to just kind of clean this up so it's a lot more basic right now we have a bunch of different car objects so I'll just select all of our objects here and uh, join the geometry so I'll go to object and join and now we just have one car that we can use to recreate the car geometry in our scene and use this data to composite our elements more effectively so I'll go ahead and just scale this down really quick and we're going to start playing placing it on top of our road here. Something like this probably is pretty good. And uh, we wanna use our you know, camera view here to align it as best we can. 
and we want to make sure also that you know our wheels are touching the ground plane here where our road would be in the scene like this scale it up a bit something like this should be pretty good you can also you know open the doors of this 3d car to recreate the car doors of uh, our live action shot as well but um, just depends on the level of detail you're going for I think something like this should be pretty good and one thing we can do to test it is we can play through our footage and as you can see it's looking pretty good our 3d car is pretty much exactly where our live action car is in our shot so now we can use this car as a holdout layer to mask out any road elements that we add on top of our scene and uh, we don't have to rotoscope anything out manually but uh, first we're going to duplicate this car and use it to recreate the geometry of the other two cars in our scene so i'll go ahead and do that really quick All right guys, so I have recreated the geometry of the cars in our scene here, and you can be as precise as you want. You can even go into, you know, edit mode, turn on proportional editing, and start dragging different parts of the car around to make sure it's masking out what you want. But uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I think this is going to be pretty good. As you can see, a pretty good general recreation of the geometry in our scene. And uh, now what we can do is we can select our three cars here. I'll press M on my keyboard and add them to a new collection, and we'll call them Car Holdouts and I'll click on OK. And now we have all of our cars in one collection, which is going to allow us to use them as a mask more effectively. And now that we've added our cars to their own collection, what we can do here to make them a holdout layer to hide anything behind them in this view layer, we can just go to our restriction toggle options here, and we'll go ahead and select all of these to enable them in our viewport. And for our car holdouts collection, we'll click on this holdout option here. And now anything behind our cars in this view layer is going to be masked asked out using our car geometry. All right, so now that we've added our cars to the scene, let's start adding some grunge effects to our road here. So the first thing I wanna add is some tire marks behind our main car here. So I'm going to import that image that I showed you earlier in the tutorial of the tire marks exported with an alpha channel. So uh, I'll go ahead and close our second window here and uh, go to viewpoint camera on this main 3D view here. And uh, I'll just go to uh, file, import, and images on planes. If you don't have the images as planes option available to you, you just need to enable this uh, in your preferences so you can just go to edit and preferences and then under add-ons go to uh, search and images and enable your checkbox for import export images as planes and uh, once you do that you should have the option available to you so go ahead and select this and now we'll find the image of the tire marks and as you can see here i have it called tire marks png with alpha and we'll import it and as you can see here it's going to enter the middle of our scene, so we'll just bring it up. And if I go to rendered view, you can see that it's just some very basic tire marks here. We do need to add some light to our scene. So I'll go ahead and go to our world panel here and uh, under color, we'll select environment texture. I'll just go to open and I'll add a very basic HDRI to light up our scene. So I've saved an HDRI here. So I'll just add this HDRI. And uh, now if we go to render view, we can see the detail in our tire marks a bit better. We also don't want to see our HDRI in the background. So I'll go to our render properties tab here and then under film, we'll check on the transparent checkbox. And as you can see here, now we're not seeing our uh, tire tracks at all and the reason for that is because when we added it to our scene our car holdout collection was selected with of course our holdout option enabled so what we need to do is we need to select our tire marks uh, plane here and click on M and we'll just move it to our scene collection and now as you can see here we can see it just fine with lots of detail and now what we can do is just go to viewpoint camera and we can just place our tire marks behind our main car here so I'll just kind of rotate it where I would think this kind of car would skid to a stop here and we want to make sure also that it's uh, you know down by the road here so we want to try to line up our geometry in the scene ideally we want it right on top of our road something like this scale it up a bit maybe and as you can see here our car geometry is doing exactly what we need it to here it's just hiding our tire marks that would be behind our live action car in the scene i do need to reposition this a bit better here to make sure it's not masking where it doesn't need to mask for this shot i also might duplicate these uh, tire marks and add them to our distant police car as well so i'll just go here further in the clip press shift d with our tire marks selected and just drag them further off in our road here kind of 
like the police car is skidded to a halt as well something like this and again as you can see here nice little holdout layer from the car geometry we've added and I think this should be pretty good for our tire marks layer so now we will just duplicate this process to add a little bit of grunge to our scene so again I'll go to uh, file and uh, import images as planes and uh, we'll choose the asphalt damage texture that we've created with its alpha channel and click on import images as planes and again it will enter the center of our scene here and we'll bring it up rotate it 90 degrees and uh, we want to make sure that uh, we move this to our main scene collection here and uh, now what we can do is uh, you know go to render view here and see what we're getting so far as you can see this is our uh, grunge layer that we can add to our shot and it's a little bit bright right now but don't worry we'll uh, deal with that a little bit later right now we're just going to position our assets so we just want to make sure it's positioned down by the road here maybe uh, by this back police car something like this maybe and I'll go ahead and uh, duplicate this once and rotate it around to give it some variation maybe put this one by our center car here and we'll also duplicate it one more time and we'll place another one by our cop car here near the bottom of our frame so now we have some nice uh, grunge on our road that we can composite later um, I duplicate it once more and I'll put one in the background as well and again we're just trying to position our grunge right now we're going to deal with the materials and compositing a bit later but uh, this should be pretty good make sure that they're lined up with our road geometry here as you can see it looks kind of like a mess you can uh, you know subdivide these planes and delete the points that are not on the road if you like but I don't see any issues with what we've done so far unless you just prefer a little bit cleaner look so now let's go ahead and add some shattered glass to the road in front of our background car here so I'll just again go to import images as planes and we'll choose the shattered glass texture with an alpha channel import it and again we'll just uh, place it right in front of our car here almost like the car has gotten in a wreck or something and the windows have just shattered and gone everywhere you can kind of make a story with this process if you like right now it's in our holdout layer we want to make sure to move it to our scene collection and if we go to rendered view let's see what we get I want to actually delete some of this portion in our snow here but the general positioning is looking pretty good and again it's a little bit bright but that's just because we haven't played around with our materials yet as well as our compositing process so I'll go ahead and go to uh, edit mode with our glass element selected I'll go to edge and then subdivide and then we'll subdivide it 10 times here and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete some of the vertices where I don't want the glass to show up definitely not in the snow here as it's not flat over there you know, you want to try to hide the seams of the edge of your element as best you can. And uh, yeah, I think this should be pretty good here. Finally, the last element that we're going to add before we go into our materials and compositing process is some fire on our police car in the background here. So again, I'll go to file, import, images as planes, go to our fire element here, import it into the scene, and uh, then, you know, kind of just uh, drag this 2D fire element to the police car in our scene here. And uh, let's go ahead and press M, move it to our scene collection layer, and we'll go to rendered view here. And as you can see, we have a nice fire element and uh, we can just kind of place it on our police car here let's go to camera view really quick just kind of place it maybe in the window scale it up a little bit I think this will be pretty good for one element I might add some more fire on the front windshield so I'll go ahead and press shift D and duplicate this element rotate it on the Z axis 90 degrees and we'll just kind of move this and then rotate it down so that it's kind of on the front of our car windshield here. And so you can duplicate this fire element as much as you want. You can put it on the back of the car, you know, wherever you want to have it. Let's see here. And it might look kind of funny in viewport mode, but this might help you align it a bit better. We just want this fire kind of coming off the hood of the car a bit. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking this should be pretty good for our scene. Again, uh, feel free to be kind of creative with it wherever you want to place your fire elements. Just uh, go for it. Experiment with placing different elements in your scene. But uh, anyways, now what we're going to do is we're going to separate each genre of our elements into different collections. And then we're going to create some view layers as well as some materials for each type of element so first I'll go ahead and select our fire elements here I'll select both of them and then I'll click on M I'll go to a new collection and we'll call this fire elements okay and then I'll select our shattered glass here below our last police car I'll press M add it to a new collection we'll call this glass elements 
and now we'll select all of our assets for our damaged road so let's see here if we have one back here you know all of these asphalt damaged textures i think that's all of them with all of those selected i'll press m we'll add them to a new collection we'll call it road damage okay Finally, we want to select our tire marks elements. So we'll select both of them. Again, we'll press M, add them to a new collection. We'll call it tire marks, press okay. And uh, now we have all of our different elements separated into their own collection. And we can also just delete this foreground collection as we won't need it for our shot. And one thing we can also do is we can select our ground here. Now that we've uh, placed all of our elements that we want to add to our scene, we can actually delete our ground plane since it's uh, done its job for us to recreate the geometry of our scene. And uh, yeah, now it's a little bit cleaner as well. All right, so now that we have all of our different elements in different collections, it's time to create some view layers for each type of our elements so that we can have some separate control over them in the compositing process. So here in the top right of our frame, we can see our different view layers. As you can see right now we just have one called foreground i'll go ahead and just rename this view layer maybe we'll make this one our tire marks view layer so i'll just label it here we'll call it tire marks and we'll duplicate it once and now we have tire marks 001 we'll rename this one uh road damage we'll duplicate this one add a new view layer and we'll name this one uh glass elements and finally we'll duplicate it once more at a new view layer and we'll call this one fire elements and now we have four different view layers however right now they are exactly the same so we want to adjust a few different settings in them and as i mentioned in the last video what view layers allow you to do is they allow you to use the same 3d scene however you can change the settings in which each collection is outputting their data so for example right now as you can see all of our different elements are being rendered in our tire marks view layer but what we can do is since we only want our tire marks to be in this view layer is we can actually go to road damage and select the indirect only option and now as you can see here all of the elements under the road damage collection are not being output in this view layer and uh, we can do the same thing with the glass elements as well as the fire elements and now as you can see here in this view layer we'll just have the tire marks elements so that we can composite them on top of the live action shot with their own specific blur and color correction settings so now that we've adjusted our tire marks view layer we can go to our road damage view layer and as you can see here everything pops up and our car holdouts is not uh, enabled anymore so i'll go ahead and click on the holdout option for our cars and since we just want the road damage for this view layer output i'll turn on indirect only for our fire elements our glass elements and our tire marks and now as you can see here all we have for this view layer is our road damage and i do want to adjust the materials of this road damage a bit before we move on to our next layer so i'll just go to our shading tab really quick and what i'm going to do is I'm just going to darken it a bit and then give it a little bit of displacement so maybe I'll just press shift a I'll add a color RGB curves and I'll add this in between our base color input and I'll just bring it down a little bit maybe give it a little bit of contrast just so it's not so bright right off the bat and you know just for fun I might take the input of our image and add it to the displacement option and now as you can see here we have some displacement on our road damage which is a nice little technique not exactly the most conventional but uh, it works pretty well in my opinion and uh, you know you can play with different material settings here we might want to add a little bit of a metallic look here so maybe add 0.4 metallic so there's a little bit of specularity on it and now I'm much happier with the material for our road damage so I'll go back to layout mode here and now we'll continue with our view layer setup so I'll go to our next view layer our glass elements we'll go to a rendered view here just like we did for our other view layers we want to first enable our car holdouts here for fire for road damage and for tire marks we'll enable indirect only and now we have our glass elements by themselves and I also want to adjust the material of our glass element as well so I'll just go to our shading tab once again and one thing that might be interesting for this glass element layer would be to maybe uh, increase the transmission a little bit so it's just a little bit more you know translucent and uh, you know we can play around with some settings to make it look a little bit more reflective like glass 
maybe uh, bring down the roughness a bit. That's not bad. I think there's a little bit more specularity there. Let's see what happens when we increase the metallic. Now we have a little bit more reflectivity when we uh, increase the metallic. There is a uh, proper way to do this. You know, you can add an actual CG glass element. I'm just kind of going by eye here, but uh, it should work pretty well. I'm pretty happy with this result, so I'll go back to our layout mode. And finally, we'll go to our last view layer and set this up as well. So our fire elements view layer, go to rendered view. And again, we need to enable our car holdouts. So we'll select the holdout option for cars, and then we'll select the indirect option for everything except our fire elements here. And now whenever we render our output, we'll have four different view layers that we can use in our compositor. All right, so before we do a test render and start compositing these different view layers together, what we're going to do is uh, adjust a few of the render settings here. So I'll uh, set the render samples in our render properties tab to 32. And then for advanced, I'll select the seed stopwatch for some noise variation. You can enable motion blur if you like. I think 0.5 might be a little bit much, so I'll turn it down to 0.2. Film should be transparent, and uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. I'll go to our Output Properties tab here, and I want to change the file format to OpenEXR, and we'll do 1920 by 1080 at 100% resolution. And then we can go here to our File Output and select a folder to save our file. We'll call this Police Arrest Tutorial Output. And then we'll label it here as well, and accept. And now your final composite will go to that folder. All right, so now that we've set up our view layers and render settings, it's time to render out a singular image to set up our nodes and start compositing these different elements together. So I'll just choose a frame here that I want to work with, maybe frame uh, 187. And before we render and set up our composite, I'm going to go ahead and save our project as well. Now we'll go ahead and click on render and render image and give Blender some time to render out your separate view layers so that we can composite them all together in the compositor. All right, guys, so right off the bat, you might see something like this, which obviously doesn't have all of our elements composited in our shot, but have no fear. We're going to set up our compositing nodes in a way that we get a really nice final output. We'll go ahead and close this render preview here. And finally, we will go to our compositing tab and get started. So I'll go ahead and zoom out here a bit. This is our very basic compositing node setup here. At the end of this, it might look a little bit complex if you're new to node-based compositing, but uh, don't worry, I was also new to this pretty recently and it's not too hard to figure out. But anyways, let's get started. The first thing we're going to composite on top of our live action shot here is our tire marks, which is already kind of sort of composited in our scene here. There are a few adjustments we need to make right off the bat, however, because uh, Blender automatically set this uh, node setup for you with a shadow catcher here on our bottom render layer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete our bottom render layer really quick. And then I'll take this top render layer here with our tire marks input selected here. Then I'm going to put this in our bottom node of our second alpha over node. And then I'm going to move this input here to our second alpha over node as well. And we'll just delete this first alpha over node. And now, as you can see here, we have our very basic tire marks layer overlaid on top of our footage but uh, let's adjust a few of our settings here. So first I'll go ahead and duplicate our movie clip here with its distortion and scale node as well. So I'll press Shift D and duplicate all of these. And then I'm going to press Shift A and we're going to add a mix node right before our alpha over node. And then I'm going to move this input to our second mix input here. And we're going to change the mode to multiply. And now as you can see here, our tire marks are blending into the scene a bit better. However, we do need to color correct it a bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and press Shift A. We'll add a uh, color RGB curves node here right after our tire marks input. And we'll just increase the brightness a little bit of our tire marks to kind of uh, blend them into our shot a bit better. And already this is blending into our environment much better. Uh, I might also press uh, Shift A. We'll add a color balance node as well. And I might just kind of tint our tire marks a little bit toward the color of our road here. So a little bit, you know, more tan. And now, as you can see here, I think it's blending into our environment quite a bit better. And pretty much what we're doing here is we're taking our tire marks view layer input here. We're brightening it up a little bit and then we're giving it a little bit of color correction, then multiplying it on top of our live action shot so that we can use some of the luminance values to composite it to 
together with the shadows. And finally, we're overlaying this on top of our original live action shot with the alpha over note here. So I'm pretty happy with the way our tire marks are looking here. However, depending on your shot, you can add some blur, some more color correction, change the opacity, whatever you want to do to kind of blend it into the shot. But I think this will be fairly convincing here, especially once we add our other road grunge elements on top of it. So now what we'll do is we'll press shift A. We'll add a, another render layer here. So input render layers and we're going to select this time the road damage layer again we will duplicate our movie clip undistortion and scale node as well as our multiply node and press shift d and we're going to multiply our road damage with our live action shot here so i'll take this image input to the top input of our multiply node and now we need to combine it with this node tree so uh, i will actually so I'll actually uh, press shift D on this alpha over node and uh, add this to the node tree. And then we will move this input to the bottom input of this alpha over node. And now already, as you can see, we have some road damage overlaid on top of our composite. And now we want to color correct this road damage. So I'll just add a, another RGB curves here maybe bring it up a little bit so it's not quite so dark and we'll just kind of you know adjust our road damage here so that it blends into our street a little bit more here maybe increase the contrast a bit and if you want to get more of that displacement you can actually decrease the factor on the multiply node here and as you can see, you can start seeing more of the displacement on top of the road here. However, I think it's much better with this factor at one. So it's just kind of a dark element, kind of a stain on the street itself. And I'm pretty happy with the way this uh, road damage is blending into our shot. So I'm going to move on to our glass element. So I'll just duplicate this entire node tree here where we added our road damage. I'll press shift D. And again, I will uh, duplicate our alpha over node add it right before our viewer and then connect it to our composite and then uh, I will connect this multiply to this alpha over node and we need to change the uh, view layer for our render layer input so I will select the glass element input here and we're not seeing anything show up and that's just because we've uh, done something with the RGB curves here. So maybe we can just uh, get rid of our RGB curves for now and see what it does without it. It's not showing up because this multiply node is not working well with our reflective glass element. I might actually keep it at multiply, but then I'll bring the factor down to 0.2. And there we go, that's looking much better. The glass element can be a little bit tricky since we wanna help blend it into the shadow of our police car here using this multiply node, but we can't use it too much because it almost entirely disappears. So I'll just start increasing our factor on the multiply node here until I get something that I like. My 0.3 is not bad. And then I'll add an RGB curves once again and maybe bring down the brightness of it a little bit. Just uh, color correct the element a bit here. 0.65, let's try 0.65. And I think this is looking pretty good here. Just gotta keep color correcting it a bit and adjusting our multiply settings as well. One thing I might do is uh, give it a little bit of a blur because our live action shot is a little bit blurry back here as well. It's not too sharp. So I'll just go to filter and we'll add a bokeh blur right after our RGB curves node. And then regarding the size, we'll bring it down to 0.1 maybe. And that's a little too much actually, maybe 0.05. And uh, yeah, I think that's not bad. Again, you can keep color correcting it a bit. Maybe you wanna add a uh, color balance node in here as well. Maybe tint it a little bit bluer, like the sky is reflecting off the glass maybe. Actually, maybe it needs to be a little bit warm just because of our ground here. All right, something like this is looking pretty good, but feel free to play around with this element even more in the compositing node setup here. Finally, let's composite our fire elements on top of our police car here. So I'll uh, drag our composite and our view node over here. I'll duplicate our alpha over node here and add it to our composite. And again, I'll press shift A. We'll add a render layer input and we wanna select the fire elements view layer and we'll move this image to our input for our alpha over node. And now as you can see here, we have some fire composited on top of our police car in the background. However, we do want to bring it into the scene a bit more and blend it into our environment. And one of the best ways to do this is by adding some glow to the shot. So I'll go ahead and press shift A. I will go to filter and we'll go to glare and add that to our node setup. Under our glare option, I'm going to select fog glow and I'll select the high quality option. And for threshold, I'll bring it down so the glow affects it a bit more. So maybe 0.1 for the threshold. 
And as you can see here, the fire uh, got a little bit brighter there. What we can do here to make it even brighter without adjusting the threshold even further, we can press Shift A, we can add an RGB curves node right before the glare, and then we can just increase the brightness input for the glare and it'll start brightening it up a bit more. And uh, there we have it. That's looking uh, pretty solid. It might be a little bit saturated in my opinion. So I uh, might press Shift A, add a hue saturation value node right before our alpha over node, and I'll bring down the saturation to 0.6 then that's not nearly enough i'll bring it up to 0.8 maybe 0.8 is not bad maybe 0.9 and yeah i think 0.9 is pretty solid i might increase the brightness a tiny bit more and uh yeah again keep adjusting it depending on your taste but uh, i'm pretty happy with this final result of course we can also you know add some very basic color correction to our uh, final composite here maybe give it a little bit of a color tone difference between the shadows midtones and the high highlights but uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with this result to render out your final shot of course you can just go to render and render animation and blender will output all of your frames to that open EXR sequence that you selected for its output anyways guys that's it for this video I hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let me know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next and I'll see you next time